Watching the Clippers Nuggets series, did your opinion of the Nuggets evolve or differ in any way from the matchups that you played against them? Uh, not really, uh, to be honest. Um, you know, they're a terrific basketball team. They deserve to be in the Western Conference Finals, and you know, they're a handful. Uh, you know, with the way that they play, the movement, the passing, the cutting. Um, obviously, Jamal and, and Joker have been playing at a super high level, and uh, you know they're playing with a ton of confidence. So um, you know, I wasn't surprised. And just given that you said that when they were up three one, of course you're going to lean towards probably a little bit more towards the Clippers, but you were going to be ready for both. Uh, did and what did you see in those three games that they came back and were able to win by you know, trailing double digits in each one? Yeah, um, you know, obviously once they they win Game Six, you have to uh, you have to have a, a prepare for both teams mindset. And um, you know, spend a lot of time looking at these guys, and you know, to, to me, just the, the confidence that they're playing with, the chip on their shoulder uh, that they're playing with, uh, was really noticeable. Obviously, they're a very resilient group uh, to come back from three-one twice in the same year, and we're gonna have to play great to beat them. Hey, Frank, it's Dave. You go from uh, playing a team that doesn't start a traditional center to playing a team that has one of the most talented big men in, in the game and um, I just wanted to know what you can tell us uh, about what Jokic does for them from your perspective and how you could possibly use your centers in this series versus the last series. Yeah, Joker is uh, one of the most unique players in the world and one of the mo most unique players ever to play the center position uh, in this league. Um, you know, what he, he's able to do, he basically can hurt you in all ways. He can hurt you at the three-point line, uh, in the pocket, playing the four-on-three game in the post, and, um, and obviously with his passing, which, uh, you know, they, they understand his abilities up there, uh, passing the basketball and, and do a great job speed cutting through the lane. And uh, they make it very difficult to guard. Uh, it, it does, uh, you know, make this series a little different, uh, a lot different actually than last series. Uh, in terms of uh, how much we'll use our centers. I don't want to get too much into detail, but obviously, um, you know, we're going to be the LA Lakers, uh, who we've been all, all year. You know, we adjusted to a small ball, um, a small ball team last series, but, you know, I would expect us to return to form. Hey, Coach, uh, Alan Sliwa. Just um, want, to, want to see how much you can take away from you had Damian Lillard in the first round, obviously a fantastic point guard, then James Harden, and now Jamal Murray playing where he's playing right now. Is there a lot you can take from playing those types of point guards earlier on, or it's a completely different scenario now? No, every time you play against a, a player of that caliber, uh, you learn lessons about your team. You learn uh, you know, things that you can do to try to limit them and slow them down. Uh, but every team is different. You know, the supporting cast uh, has different strengths and weaknesses, uh, different styles of play. So, you know, I think uh, the biggest thing that we can draw from that, uh, those series, is, is confidence. You know, the, the fact that we've, we did a decent job uh, trying to limit them. And, um, you know, hopefully we can carry that same kind of confidence in uh, the plan that we put together uh, for Jamal and for, uh, for Jokic. And, you um, you know, take that type of confidence into the series. Alan? Kyle Goon? Um, Frank, with um, some of the teams that have already uh, been eliminated from the playoffs, if you look at the field, um, the way you guys have won games this year, and the experience of certain individuals on a team, including LeBron, obviously, um, you know, it, it seems pretty evident that, you know, you guys have the most experience and perhaps that are, are a clear favorite. Um, do you find that that might change the mentality you guys have going forward, or do you feel like you have to protect um, guys from maybe feeling that status and, and, and uh, continuing to do what you've done so far? Yeah, my, my sense is our guys, uh, and I know our coaching staff feels this way, uh, believes that uh, any one of these three teams remaining can beat us. And, uh, you know, the, the Denver Nuggets are a terrific basketball team. So are the Boston Celtics, so are the Miami Heat. So while uh, we have players that have, that have been there, uh, we've not been there as a group yet. So uh, we're still super hungry uh, to get the job done and uh, you know, recognizing and respecting the opponents that are, that are still remaining. Frank, Frank, you guys have been in virtually the same situation after game one and the two series you played where been a little bit of a feel-out process for, for tempo and pace and all that different stuff. Obviously, I'm sure you 
don't want to be in that position after Friday. Is there anything you can do other than say, don't do that? Are there, are there ways you can try to try to ramp up competitiveness in this period between games? Or yeah, just I mean, take it as a, as a last you know, we're, we do everything we can to, to win uh, both of those first game ones. You know what I mean? And uh, it didn't go our way. Uh, it's obviously not the plan. And we're approaching these few days uh, to do everything we can from a preparation standpoint to win game one. Have you tweaked anything from preparation in terms of? Not really, no. No, no I mean, we do, you know, we, we take whatever time we have on the court in the film room, uh, study in great detail, uh, drill in great detail. And, you know, like I said, just, just uh, try to put the plan in as, as quickly as possible. Hasn't worked uh, in terms of getting victories in the first two games, but hopefully that will be different here. Jeff? Frankly, I want to share how unusual the circumstances here. Is there anything you can appreciate about not having fans, someone not having home court, and it's just stripped down to its you know basics of two teams playing ball and going out there and let them make the best team win? Do you appreciate that? Do you appreciate it? I, I don't really appreciate it. I, you know, I, I would far more prefer to have fans. Uh, obviously, we're number one seed, but you know, even without that, you know, just the environment uh, feels different. You know, and, and obviously, the intensity, the attention to detail uh, is at a playoff level. But um, you know, not having fans is, uh, you know, there's nothing I would choose about that that uh, as opposed to having fans. So. So, and I was getting that maybe it's it's brought out the best. Like, you know, there's not a one or a two seed in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, you have Denver getting there. That, you know, it, it's eliminated some of those advantages that other teams have. Yeah, and I think, uh, like I said, I think maybe that that's something from a fan's perspective. You know, they can see is is different and unique and neat. You know, um, you know, I personally uh, just rather see it the other way. All right, Tanisha, back to you. All right, Melissa Rowland. Hey, Frank, uh, the Lakers have had you uh, first team all NBA selections um, now for the first time since 2003, 2004. Uh, if you can put into words, what's it been like coaching such talent in LeBron James and Anthony Davis this season? Uh, it's, been, it's been amazing, you know, especially with these two guys. Uh, with their their leadership, their personalities, uh, you know the the way they uh, just their demeanor, you know the way they come to work every day with a great attitude. They bring enthusiasm to everything we're doing, both of them, and uh, and they both play the right way. You know they they honor the defensive end, they make the right play offensively when a double team comes, and you know they have that killer instinct to uh, impose their will on their opponent uh, when they're when they're on the court. And, um, you know, all those things have just led it to be a, you know, really enjoyable experience to be able to coach them. Hey, Frank, um, over the course of this season, there, this team has never really struggled with either a lack of urgency or, or complacency. And it's a long time to maintain it, particularly a season like this year that gets interrupted and you have to start back up again. What have you seen either from the players or you guys and coaching staff that's been able to keep it that way, that, that type of mentality for such a long period? You know, I think it starts with our leadership. You know, Anthony LeBron, um, you know, our coaching staff has, has set a high bar for accountability and uh, the care factor of every possession. Um, but Anthony and LeBron have, have, you know, taken that lead from us and, and really set that tone in practices and film sessions uh, and everything we're doing away from the court. Uh, to make sure we're at our best, you know, come uh, come game time, and uh, you know, if, if your coaching staff is is raising the bar with accountability and your player leadership is strong, uh, you're going to have a sense of urgency each time you take the court. So, hasn't been, hasn't always been perfect, um, you know. So maybe from your perspective, it has been, but you know, it's uh it's been done at a really high level, and uh, like I said, it's a great group to be a part of. Last question, Brian Kamenetsky. Hey Frank, you know, your first year, I guess it's about a decade ago now as a head coach, you know, you had a team that was anchored in the middle by Roy Hibbert. Now you're in a series with Anthony Davis and Nikola Jokic. How does that kind of just put into perspective the way that the big man has evolved, the game has evolved, and what does that 
done that meant for your coaching? Well, the, the game has changed entirely from, from where it was 10 years ago. Um, you know, what, what centers are doing right now is shooting threes and, and making plays off the bounce is ex extremely unique. Uh, wasn't really uh, around uh, back then, but just with the three-point shooting in the modern era, uh, that's changed my coaching dramatically. You know, the way uh, my offensive system um, is very different and, and more importantly, my defensive system has changed dramatically. And, um, you know, we've had, a, had to make an evolution over the last five, six years or so uh, to build a modern NBA defense and you know I'm proud of what we we put together uh, with our rules and our scheme and all that stuff and, and these guys go out and execute it with passion so uh, all of that gives me uh, a great deal of confidence uh, going into the, into the, the next round here.